Well, we've seen it. I think actually VP played Silencer versus TA. It was like okay, but Sumil ended up just drawing them at the end. So I, I don't know how willing they are to put that matchup in the mid. I mean, Silencer is not terrible against TA mid. You can definitely play that if you want. Oh. Come on, guys. <laughs> Come on. Come on. That what? that what? that what? The ill uh, and Dusa. We have another first, respect. A first time pick at TI5 as well. That's another one. And two games in a row now. The pool is shrinking. There are only 19 heroes left in the pool that have not played at least one game. You guys didn't even let me talk about it. Shame on you. We'll get more afterwards. I'll oh, high five you in the break. Let's head down to the commentary team for game number one. That's right, another elimination match on our hands. Vernis Pro facing up against Team Secret, who are supposed to be the favorites of this tournament, are now seeing their tournament lives on hand against VP. Blitz, you had a lot to say about this draft, starting off with the Lena carry. You had this one from the get-go. In the first one, two, you said this is either a Lena support or a Lena safe lane farmer. Why is that? Sorry, it's fine. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's Don't get distracted down. by the memes. It's all good, dude. All right, so I think part of what makes Lena such a strong opener instead of Queen of Pain is that you can run her in pretty much any lane. Like, you can run her as a carry, a support. I think it's just one of the most safe openers that you can go for. And I feel like S4 was going to play it almost guaranteed just because once the Queen of Pain is banned, I feel like those are the two heroes that he's most comfortable with at this point. Playing the Queen of Pain in the carry role, playing the Lina, they just want him to play the playmaker role mm -hmm. more than the actual one position hard carry like Arteezy will play. Like even though Arteezy's in this mid lane, he's the true carry. Right, it harkens back to the old evil geniuses when Arteezy was playing there, being the carry mid. It seems that's going to continue here with Team Secret. But what about this last pick from Virtus Pro, the Medusa? Hero we haven't seen hardly at all in this patch. Why is this our last pick? I think in this game in particular, you have a lot of different ways to defend her. Uh, it's a silencer who will be playing in the mid lane, so he'll get level 6 relatively early, and he'll get a good amount of farm, but they have a lot of different ways to protect the Medusa. This is a hero that toe-to-toe -to -toe can stand up against pretty much anybody on Secret. It's going to be incredibly hard for them to burst her down, even with the Luna Aghanim Scepter, and so I think it just works incredibly well for their draft. Yeah, certainly a big late game advantage to Virtus Pro. So Team Secret are going to have to play this a lot more aggressively, perhaps more aggressively than they're used to. You can see already S4 getting some free shots against DK Phobos. He does secure the bounty rune, and so too does God grab the bounty rune for his silencer. So VP already with a great start there, especially with Lil doing some body blocking. What about this mid matchup? Templar Assassin versus Silencer. Is this going to be like a couple levels in Curse of the Silent just to try and put some pressure on that refraction? Uh, I don't think so. You can grab one or two levels, but I just feel like maxing the Glaives of Wisdom is so strong, which he's going right. to go for right now. The attack speed on Silencer is actually quite good, but uh oh, she's got to be careful because the Earthshaker is going to be there with the stun, and it's a pretty okay matchup as long as you don't overextend. You can go for the last word. What he's doing right now is really smart. He's just right-clicking RTZ nonstop. Because Arteezy actually went for the Wraith ban, meaning that he's got three Refraction charges by my count. Mm -hmm. Like He can use it three times, and if he just gets zoned out like this, and you pull Creep Aggro correctly, the TA actually can't stand in the lane. Yeah, especially now with Curse of the Silent taking away more of those Refractions. Soon as he sees the Refraction popped, he immediately uh, uses that Curse of the Silent to put more pressure on RTZ, especially since he's not going to be getting that quick bottle, at least not fast enough. He will run out of those charges, and G may be able to take control of this lane. Now, let's talk about some of our other off lanes, such as DK Phobos, who has to use the Skewer to be able to get away from the Toscalina combination at bottom. Seems like a very kill-heavy combo between these two. DK Phobos is going to have to play this a bit careful. I actually think this is a lane he's going to do okay in, or mm -hmm. at least get levels, because when you're playing a core Lina, especially in the short lane, the weakness is you either go for the CS or your last hitting, right. or you're right-clicking him, and most of the time you're just going to be playing the CS deny game, which he's doing right now, and DK Phobos, as long as he only approaches when he has mana for skewer, and the cooldown off, he should mm -hmm. be perfectly fine. All he has to do is make sure he stays ahead of the snowball and ahead of the ice shards. Uh, if he can't get the skewer off, he'll easily be chain stunned down and perhaps may end up dying. Zai, meanwhile, is going to be our other off laner. He's going to be playing the Darkseer, just picking up the Banner Rune at the top lane. He's going up against the Dusa. 
uh, Lil's Rubik, as well as FNG's Naga Siren. Now, this is another one of those safe laners, despite the fact that it is a hard carry. Oh, God, is going to be not quite caught out. The Ice Shards and Fisher combination doesn't block him in. And he will be able to escape and continue his pressure immediately onto RTZ. But going back to it, uh, a safe laner who is actually self-sufficient, after a certain amount of time, you can afford to leave the Medusa alone in a lane against a Darkseer. Yeah, she can pretty much zone him out. Uh, the build that he's going for is that Mystic Stake really, really, really strongly. And so he should be able to kill the Ion Shell Creep really easily. Mm -hmm. Right now, what causes me concern for Secret more than anything is this mid lane where G... I mean, Silencer's a hero that just naturally dominates the lane. You can't really go up against him toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And one of the weaknesses of TA is that she does a good job CSing, but it's really hard to pressure with her pre-level 6. And you're seeing that right now because he's pretty much just spamming to keep her out of the lane. And this is not something you want if you're Team Secret. Like, I'm used to seeing RTZ pretty much dominate the mid-matchup, or at least win heavily in CS. Yeah, he's actually being forced to do a little bit of neutraling. Now, he does have the hard camp that's stacked up a couple times, and that will be a good way for him to come back into the game. But for now, hold up. Snowball, DK Phobos, Fisher, Light Strike Array, Wills land, and DK Phobos is not going to be able to get the skewer in time. S4 picks up the first blood. Yeah, they just played the spacing game perfectly there. Puppy with a really nice Fisher. And Secret set that up really well, but this is a lane that you expect for them to get a kill here. Yeah, absolutely. DK Phobos, as you said, should be able to get a decent amount of experience and maybe even some CS via the Shockwave, but it's just the triple stun lane that's tough for any offlaner. RTZ now comes back with full HP, full mana, and then is immediately rebuffed by G. Already bring, brought down to below half HP and is rapidly running out of tangos. Yeah, and this is no longer a matchup, I think, where they can gank for him anymore, or it doesn't really matter if they gank him because he has boots. It's going to be incredibly hard to kill him, and they might actually just make an attempt for him here mid. Yeah, they slowing him down. With the last word. This might actually just kill him. One more hit. Yeah, they're going to slow him down with the last word. Couple more right clicks. G, it is nighttime, making a lot harder. He's going to live with 49 HP. Now G is in some serious trouble. Kuro actually picks up the illusions. G turns around, trying to go for RTZ, but he pops a refraction, and G will end up going down. Silencer, just getting a bit too aggressive, searching for that kill on our tour. It would have been a big boon. Four VPs laning phase that they got that kill, but the result is Secret are able to sneak in with their supports and get the counter kill. I think in some ways that just goes to show how much respect they have for RTZ, because that dive was probably not going to be successful in any case. Right. You can dance around the tree line at nighttime. The silencer doesn't have the best way to spot you. Both of his spells were on CD, but he dove it so hard because there was a chance at killing him. Mm -hmm. And the TP support is there. Enough people come in and they were able to kill him, but... Uh, this is still a lane that G is doing fine in. The TA isn't dominating, and she struggled pretty hard. She still doesn't have boots yet, fully completes the magic wand before anything, and this is going to be a really crucial stack for her. This should be her level 6, and from here on out, you can finally see TA start to pressure the silencer. Yeah, finally with being able to have the traps, you have kill potential solo against the silencer. Uh, just lay down one or two traps. This, of course, means it's a little bit important for VP to either always have a support behind G, or even laying down an early counter ward just to make sure the middle lane is cleared of those pesky traps. But while RTZ is farming up that hard camp, we've got Kuro, who's now going to take over the middle lane, getting that free experience. And our Magnus, DK Phobos, is actually just now heading back to lane. Comparing him as well as the offlaner, Zai, he's level 4 and Zai is only level 3. Even when VP have rotated their supports into the middle lane, Zai is still not catching up to the Magnus. It's just one of those lanes where he can't really afford to come up because Lil is just going to give him the right click, right click, right click. So he just has to stand back, spam Ion Shell pretty much, hope that the lane pushes up. Right. I'd actually kind of like to see him just go to the jungle. Uh, because he's not really pressuring the Medusa too much here. Like, she's perfectly fine when it comes to HP. She's got phase boots now, too. Level 4 Mystic Snake. It's going to be really, really, really hard for him to pressure him at all. So I think it's more important that Zai actually starts to get some amount of farm. But the reason he can't go there is because RTZ just cleared out most of the jungle camps. Now, here's a big advantage, especially with the change-up of some of the neutrals, uh, such as Mud Golems now having a mana pool. Uh, you can easily clear through stacks with Mystic Stake because most of these neutrals do have a mana pool you're going to be able to leech from. You can just constantly spam this out over and over again. So Illidan is going to spend some time clearing through both this medium camp as well as the hard camp that's available to him and leave the top lane to DK Phobos, who's going to need some... Uh, some gold. Just getting the experience by itself is not good enough. You really need that blink dagger on a mag. Yeah, RTZ, even with all those stacks, is still only level 6. Whereas if you look at G, 
He is level 7, and I think the last time they played Silencer mid, he actually didn't get a lot of farmer levels, which is pretty typical of a Silencer mid. Uh, the weakness of the lane is just that it's incredibly easy to die. Almost any dive kills you. Right. So you need to have a really good start for RTZ. Might just pick up Illidan here. And no, they're going to go for, for Lil it. instead, it looks like. They still have the two-man smoke. They're going to come over. FNG is there as well. They're going to go for G. We'll be able to catch him out. The burst damage isn't quite there. He's going to be able to get away thanks to the telekinesis of Lil. Now S4 is going to have their turn around with the global silence. They pick up the free intelligence. And now RTZ, well, he's stuck in a bad, bad place here. He's got the TP, but can he actually get out of this situation? It's all five of VP running him down, and RTZ is definitely dead. Plus four intelligence already for the silencer. And this is so significant. These are the two cores from Secret that invaded so far into VP's jungle. So it costs VP almost nothing, no time at all. They'll just go back to their fountain. It's a really short trip. They can heal up where Secret lose a lot out of that. Like the fact that S4 was pretty much free farming at bottom and then he commits to that and they don't even get a kill. And the other thing is you just fed four intelligence away to the silencer at the same time. And TA especially can't afford to do that. Right, she's already got, she's incredibly dependent on the very limited mana pool that she has, so losing some of that intelligence, it's gonna be difficult. Artur pushing forward, trying to catch him. Beautiful ice shards, God, in some serious trouble, doesn't have the global silence and will just be burst down. In fact, VP even canceling the TP there, knowing that there's nothing they could do to save their mid. That was just Kuro with absolute sick ice shards. He placed those so well, there was no way he could get out and it kept him stuck there for the entire duration. Well played by Secret, and they're putting a lot of pressure on this mid silencer, and they should. It's a lane that's incredibly weak, and you want to be able to punish it as much as you can. He has no escape mechanism, and it's not even that great if he gets, uh, if he's under farmed, it's incredibly bad, right? So you want to just put the pressure on him if there's anybody that you want to just put pressure on, and Illidan's going to rotate in mid because he's the tankiest by far, and they have to rotate him anytime they want to defend the tower, but what Secret are going to do is actually just rotate top because they know that a lot of heroes have rotated mid. Yeah, essentially they're going to stay one step ahead of Virtus Pro. VP can't really get into a full-on team fight just yet, especially with Global Silence still down, so... Oh, they should glyph this. Yeah. Alright, they don't actually pop it, but that's fine. Tower still going to go down anyway to Zai. Get some much-needed recovery gold there. I think a good job right now, though. He's finally caught up. 25 CS and a tower kill. That's not too bad for a Darkseer, if I'm not mistaken. Now, I'm still a bit concerned. Let's talk about Medusa item builds here, because uh, Medusa is obviously one of the key factors for Virtus Pro in this game. Item-wise, what do you like to see from Medusa nowadays? Do you like to see a more aggressive hold-up? Zai's going to be caught here, Telekinesis, and going to be bursted down nice and quick. The TP out is not going to be in time. Just too many heroes there. Yeah, and Elden gets the last hit. That helps her so much, but... Uh, you were asking about item builds on Dusa. Mm -hmm. Scotty is incredibly common just because of what it gives you. It gives you a slow, which Medusa sorely needs. She right. It's kited so easily. Uh, this game, going for something like drums into like point booster isn't a bad idea either. The point booster just is one of the most value items in the game for the Medusa. Yeah. Um, if you want to go for the drums, it's it means that you're typically going to be in a lot more early game engagements. Mm -hmm. You can go for the Lincolns here, I guess. It's I feel like terrible. there's a, a lot of value in the just Yasha to begin with as well, and then you can choose your item build from there. Potentially going to Yasha, which is such a huge increase in farming speed for Medusa due to the both damage and attack speed increase. Illidan is trying to chase down S4 right now. DK Phobos does have an RP, but they're not actually going to go for S4, just chasing him back. But yeah, like Yasha, and then you can make the decision perhaps to go into the Scotty or perhaps a Manta. There used to be the item build a lot of Lincolns, but it seems nowadays, in the last you know few patches where we do see Dusa, it's just too slow of an item build, not enough offense. Yeah, that's why you don't see heroes like Morph so much anymore, because they rely on items like Lincolns. But God, he's like... going to pop the Global Silence, but they're inside of the Snowball. That means they are not silenced up, and G will go down. The Telekinesis is going to be able to catch Kuro, though. RP being faked out. DK Phobos doesn't need it, though. And Zai, he's going to be caught, too. Illidan, look into my eyes. He's going to be able to pick up that kill as well. That's really good for VP, but at the same time, that. That Silencer's dirt poor. He's not going to have a lot of impact. He needs items. Make no mistake about it. Silencer's the type of hero that if you don't have items, you can't just solely rely on levels to be able to bail yourself out. Right. Like, there are some heroes in the mid lane where it doesn't matter too much. An SF will eventually catch up because he can go to the jungle, but Silencer doesn't have that same amount of space. 
Yeah, this is why you would sometimes see the carry silencers uh, going for the hand of Midas just because both levels and farm were so critical. Illidan's going to be caught here. Light Strike Array combination, but of course, Illidan is so tanky thanks to that level 3 mana shield. They get the deny in the end, but Illidan is now blocked out, and the snowball grabs everybody oh, through. DK Phobos, he missed the cure. Still going to be in a three man RP. They need to get Ferdy's Pro out of here, though. FNG, there goes the Laguna Blade. High Shards on top of the Magnus as well, and FNG is going to be caught. Arteezy runs him down easily with the Ion Shell. And it's only really G. He may not even survive. As the trap goes off, slows him down. Ice shards blocking him out. Lil comes in, trying to stop this aggression. But a snowball will still be able to bring them into the oh, tier puppy. three tower. Fisher goes out, slowing down Lil. They're going in deep to the enemy base, but there's no buybacks from VP. Girls dropping lower, lower. They'll pick up that kill. Arteezy just has the refraction to survive. He's going to TP out and will be able to get away. A one for four exchange to the favor of Secret. And this is the lineup that Secret wanted to play. They just wanted to get aggressive as fast as possible. A hero like Medusa has such a slow startup. Same with a hero like Silencer. I mean, what does a Silencer do in a situation like that? He watches the enemy team dive his, his tier fours, and he doesn't really have an option of helping out the rest of his team. That's the weakness of it. You can't really provide anything but the team fight utility. Your actual damage is a little bit too low. You don't have a disable to go along with your hero. And, I mean, G's struggling. So you could have just made it such a priority to slow him down as much as possible. And you can see after that team fight, Secret now raised up to a 3,000 net worth lead over VP. And I think you're right. I mean, in general, VP from the get-go, looking at their draft, it's rather passive. It doesn't do a whole lot in the first 20 minutes of the game. All three cores rely on a certain amount of farm. Even the offlaner, Magnus, needs his blink dagger before he's truly effective. And the supports as well are, are a little bit low on damage. Rubik isn't known for being terribly offensive. He just combos well with other heroes. And then, of course, you've got the, the Naga Siren who is more defensive in nature due to the ultimate. Yeah, I think the net is just really good against both the Templar Assassin and the Darkseer. Mm -hmm. And the sleep can bail your Medusa out and reset for your Magnus, but the problem, as you saw, is that when DK Phobos missed the Skewer, even if he hits it there, I think they still can't win the fight because they just don't have the damage in this early game to back it up. What VP right now have to do is just play incredibly passively, push out the lanes using the Magnus Shockwave, get a Blink Dagger, and just hope that Illidan can get six slotted because it's really, really difficult for them to fight before he has at least two major items. Right. The limited amount of damage on the side of VP, it just seems like it's not going to be enough to kill anybody on the side of Team Secret for a long time now, especially with the mech now being picked up by Zai. You can see they're going for a four-man smoke here. If they get the right pick off, they can turn this into another objective, maybe even take an early Roshan. But Virtus Pro are centering up at the top lane, playing very defensively around their tier two towers right now. It seems they do have some sort of idea that Secret are looking for a gank. Yeah, it's a little bit, our Secret are really aware of where VP are right now. When you're playing this defensively, your jungle is gonna be your sanctuary, but VP, if you notice their positioning, they're five man, they're doing the family style farming right now. Yeah. They're so afraid to leave each other. They have to rely on F and G sleep to be able to get them out, but this is so inefficient and it's actually kind of working out because nobody from Secret is farming to punish them and Secret's gonna say, okay, if you're just gonna stay in your own jungle, then we'll decide to farm out everywhere. Like Arteezy's gonna go top and then take these two camps pretty much as long as he wants. Right. Uh, and then the rest of his team can pretty much take their own jungle and spread out the lanes as they push in. Yeah, if you put pressure on these towers, you're going to force eventually Virtus Pro to split up a little bit, and maybe you can find your opening. Bottom lane, Yule Scepter is going to be able to catch DK Phobos, trying to blow him up with Laguna Blade. They do get it. Lil stole that to Laguna Blade, and is going to hold on to it for later. So might still be able to get a turnaround kill, though. Great pick off for S4 on the offlane Magnus, slowing down that Blink Dagger even further. You trade a spell for a mag kill, you do that every single time. Like, you're trying to slow down this Blink Dagger as much as possible. Mm -hmm. If you look at VP's lineup, there's almost zero way for them to initiate. You can use the Naga Sleep to lead the fight, but you don't want to do that. That's your safety mechanism. That's your, okay, our Medusa's about to die, and I can't let her lose all this net worth ability. And without that Blink Dagger, there's, their supports are terrible at initiating. You've got a Medusa that's an incredibly static hero, and... The silencer is the same way. You're waiting for them to take fights into you before your global silence. See some lines already being drawn at that bottom lane. Looks like Kuro wants to be able to push down that tier one tower. And this, if they can actually get that tier one tower, Puppy is very close to his blink dagger already. He may have it before the Magnus, and that'll be huge. 
BP are actually going for a four-man smoke gank right now. They're gonna try and pick off Arteezy, who does not have any sort of blink dagger. A way to get out of this one. Telekinesis ensnared up and easily bursted down. Even the Laguna Blade being used in there from Lil, just to make sure they get that pick off. That's more int for G. He almost has the Rod of Atos. DK Phobos is really close to his blink dagger after getting that kill. That was a significant one, but still, it requires pretty much everybody from VP every single time. And that's kind of okay. It's not an ideal situation, but at the same time, you are picking up kills. And the point of this lineup is not to fight in the mid game. The point of this lineup is just get your Medusa farmed up, hope for RPs, and you can hold the game indefinitely with those two spells. Right. Look at the very aggressive vision being placed by Team Secret. They're pretty much saying if VP want to play really defensively around their tier two towers, that's fine. We just don't want to give them too much room to farm up. If they ever venture outside of the base, they want to be able to counter them. I love this early Desolator pickup from RTC, despite the fact that this build, you know, maybe got him caught in that top lane with, you know, really no way of escape. This will allow him to be able to put a lot of solo pressure on the top lane, quickly pushing down the creep wave and threatening those tier two towers. I think he goes for the Roshan at some point, too. Mm -hmm. They've got enough map control that they can go for it. For the sure. danger here, though, is that, again, you don't know how close DK Phobos is to that Blink Dagger. And at the same time, you've got a lot of different spells to fight in the Rosh pit. FNG has the Sleep. You've got the Global Silence. You can Global Silence Sleep one of the two and then just walk into the Rosh pit and look for a fight. So Secret, I think they're going to try to go for a Smoke Gank beforehand and then establish tempo again. No ward being placed, but there was already a counter there. And this also makes Secret realize that there is going to be a smoke. FNG, okay, this is going to be an offensive sleep for them to try oh, and pick up some heroes, but this, this is really dangerous. They pop the Global Silence. RP on two, but S4 has already managed to get they the Yule Scepter. The They're going to try and burst down DK Phobos. Kuro is going to be the target. Snowball going to run into two here. Illidan, meanwhile, just trying to get the rest of his team out of this one with his ultimate. But Secret are still going to be able to search for it. They're Here going for Lil right now. Uh, Puppy comes in with the Echo Slam on top of the vacuum. Beautiful combination, take it out too. The slow is there on FNG as well as God. Puppy looking for the Fisher, catches at least G. That's gonna be a third kill coming out as Curl kills him with the ice shards. Now FNG runs into one They're trap, a secondary one, trying to TP up, but the snowball is gonna be there in time. A fourth kill for Team Secret. VP, it seemed like a very odd moment to go for a bit of aggression there. The offensive sleep. Did not work out at all. VP just, as you said, do not have the damage. That's the thing is, you're 200 gold away from your Blink Dagger and your Magnus, and then you don't have to expend the sleep. You can just look for the RP and hope that you catch at least two there, and then you realize that that fight's going terribly, and you're like, this is terrible, we should not have done this. Regrets, and then you just sleep and get out, but without that sleep there, you're hard committed to the fight at that point. Right. You win that fight, or you lose five. That's actually how that fight goes at that point, and I mean, we saw it right there. That's the weakness of having supports like this and having the lead with that, because Zai just popped the mech, full HP. And now, as you said, they're going to be able to take Roshan. Lil is showing himself. They slow him down with Fisher, lock him in with the ice shards too. Lil can't go anywhere. He may have to just TP out for fear of Snowball. Sure enough, here it comes. They go on to Lil. DK Phobos managed to grab two with the skewer, but there's still just not enough damage. They're trying to pop Kuro right now, but Illidan pops the ultimate, will be able to get the right clicks in. Arteezy is stunned up, turned into that storm oh, form, but Illidan is completely blocked out now. Yule Scepter into the Light Strike array, will be able to control him. Laguna Blade to pop him. Arteezy loses Aegis now, but it's still going to be a good fight for Team Secret. Vacuuming up to God, trying to get whatever damage he can before he dies. FNG will be able to successfully TP out and DK Phobos just stays out of that fight almost entirely after his skewer. VP once again going into a fight that just cannot be won. They just walked in again. They got caught by that Roche pit, which is unfortunate, but they lose three for the price of one. Not worth it at all. Another huge gold swing. That's 12k already at 21 minutes and Secret lineup was built to do this. They were meant to just continuously run at the lineup of VP until VP breaks, but you still have to look at VP's lineup and say that they're always she Nice steal, beautiful. Lil catching him with the telekinesis and turning the Fisher back around Puppy, but he's actually still seeing the life. He gets the creep aggro off from Lil, gets the last right click. Now an RP, an RTZ, they need to control him underneath the tower, but he instantly blinks away. Thank you, Blink Dagger. Now actually a beautiful Mel dodges the ensnare as well. Arteezy's gonna get out of here. Zai, he's gonna be in a bit of trouble. He's already used his surge on our tour, but it's gonna be fine. VP slowed down by the trap, will not be able to catch up. That was just pure out team play right there. Zai comes in, he's barely any mana at all, saves Arteezy who 
dodges the net with that half second meld, continues to run. And they just don't have damage right now. DK Phobos commits the skewer RP, doesn't do anything. They actually can't burst him down anymore. They have to just wait for this Medusa to get six slotted. I think DP just have to start to realize the facts of the matter and say, okay, we can't take a fight at this point. Just play incredibly defensive. And they can play like that, but they just choose to take fights at their tier two and they're gonna lose heroes for it. And I think VP just play defensive, wait it out. Their lineup is incredibly strong at the ultra late game. You've got a Medusa with mm -hmm. a Magnus on top of that. No reason to take fights in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the net worth chart, you could see a very dramatic difference. Once VP chose to go for that initial sleep, uh, you know, offensive sleep fight, the, the net worth changed dramatically. Uh, team Seeker were only about 5,000 net worth ahead and then two really bad team fights and all of a sudden they're above 12,000. I think VP are just getting a little bit too skittish, which is perfectly fine in this situation. Uh, they're not 100% certain if they can win a fight or not, but they decide to go for it and you learn that lesson and I think VP is going to learn off of that, especially in this game and just say, okay, let's play a little bit more passively, let's wait for our opportunities and they're a good enough team to still win this. Yep, yeah, it's just going to be all about playing defense right now. Team Secret is already knocking on that tier three in the top lane, Arteezy with that Desolator putting in the damage fast. The rest of VP are actually looking to take that tier one bottom, but they are going to be forced back. They have to stay five man constantly. So the moment Illidan goes up to the top lane, everybody else has to retreat. So right now, Magnus, one of the best high ground defense heroes in the game, just because you can drag people back to your tier, uh, to your tier threes. And that's what you're looking for right now. But secret, what they're probably going to do is just farm out the map, wait for the next Roshan, maybe even smoke and bait VP into thinking they're going for the Roche and force a sleep. Even if VP get away from that at that point, you've committed to sleep and you know you can take the Roche on no matter what. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to push preemptively before that. Like, RTZ's not that tanky, actually. He can still die quite easily. He's gone for this really ultra glass cannon build with the Deso, Blink, Dagger, and Yasha. Right. Without a BKB, it's incredibly easy to kill him still. Nice blink away there from DK Phobos. RTZ will just take the creeps. He was trying to farm up. And it feels like VP are going to have to pick up some items that allow them to kite Team Secret around, particularly uh, Arteezy's Templar Assassin, who, as you said, does have such an offensive build. I feel like a four staff is really necessary. DK Phobos, maybe even the Silencer picks one up as well. Uh, Ghost Scepters, another item that may be necessary. Oh, they're sandwiching right here. Yeah, they're gonna try and go for S4. He does the old scepter will will be caught by the RP. Virtus Pro are willing to throw everything they have to be able to make sure they get a pick off there. But at the same time, with Global Silence and Illidan popping his ultimate, Team Secret will not be able to get anything else. But Artiz is already there in that top lane, putting pressure on the tier three. Lil kind of skittish, doesn't really want to challenge him too much. VP. And God was kind of trapped there in the middle lane, but now, oop, there's the steep FNG. Gonna make sure that Kuro doesn't get out of this one. There's still the Snowball, though. Still a lot of potential for Kuro to maybe get out of this one. The Snowball's gonna delay his death, pulling it back. Kuro now trying to run himself away, but the Ukes are still there. Vacuum up oh. three, and Echo Slam! There it is from Poppy with the Snowball on top! And VP quickly trying to retreat, but they've been caught. Lil Laguna Blade and the last right click catches him. Illidan is also running out of mana. Arteez, he's trying to pick up as many kills as possible. Illidan will end up going down, and Team Secret does wipe four right in front of their base. Oh man, that was such a beautifully well set up play. Zai with that vacuum. Puppy reads it as they're being sucked in. They overcommit a little bit too hard for Kuro. I mean, this is just secret at the top of their game right now. They're really feeling it. This is when a team just really feels like they can execute whatever combo that they want because the rest of the game has gone so well for them. I mean, Arteez is just chasing everybody down at will. They're going to take this tier three tower down for free. They know that the slip is down. They know that the RP is down as well. Yeah, it seems like a full lane of racks potentially with the Dusa down for another 15 seconds. At the very least, range racks. It's going to be trying to be picked up. Nice blink dodge there. The Ensnare will grab the range racks. They're going to look for more. Got to be careful though. Lil's actually stolen Meld. Not a bad ability for Rubik solely because he's got such long range. And FNG and the rest of his boys will be able to push back Team Secret and defend their melee racks. That's the important one. But still, losing two, three in a range racks this early on to the game is a bad sign for Virtus Pro's chances. It's just more of a net worth swing than you'd want to see right now. Uh, it's like 20k after that, same in experience, but 
I stress that VP can still do this. Yeah. Like, I don't want to count them out just yet. This entire tournament has been about the comeback and how teams have been able to put it together. And VP's lineup is built for that. You still got ways to get back into this game, but it just gets harder as the game goes on because Secret are just feeling more and more bold. And this is not a team that's going to sit back like they did in that last game against, uh, was it Ehome? Like, they're playing incredibly aggressively from start one. I feel like though now that they've kind of established some dominance, they can afford to sit back and farm for the next five to ten minutes and just get those like the way that EG played their game, right? They just build up such a huge net worth lead that the, by the time they go uphill, it's the death push. And if you manage to rub off that, great, that's amazing. But it's just so unlikely because the enemy has such a large lead. Yeah, it's a really good way to play. It's really passive, but there's nothing wrong with securing a 30k gold lead. Yeah, exactly. That means you can pretty much take two fights in a row, lose them and still have a pretty decent size lead. I like this pickup. Poppy Halls gets caught there. Turn around with the Fisher, And I love the Enchant Totem, just to make sure that in situations like this, Lil is not able to steal the Fisher. I also love Arteezy's build going for the Manta next. Incredibly glass cannon build, but if he uses the Manta at the right times, he can actually dodge so much. Yeah, it's really good at breaking the Global Silence and getting out of a lot of spells. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty easy pickup for him to make, but uh, they're just waiting for the Roche Pit right now. They've got a trap in there, and they're going to farm out the map as much as they possibly can, and only send the supports into the jungle. So in case uh -oh, they get... Oh god, in some trouble, DK Bobo's going to need to help him out with an RP. Back him on it too, there's a wall on top. They managed to drink, bring some of them away, but God's not going to be able to make that TP out. Kuro once again is there with the snowball. Now DK Bobo's trying to stay ahead of Puppy. FNG's ready to go with the sleep if Secret moved too far forward. There it is. The sleep is out. He actually needs to help out Illidan. Looks like VP are not going to try and force anything out of this. They accept that they have to blow the sleep to make sure everyone else stays alive. But this is now a prime opportunity for Team Secret to push into the base, knowing that there's two different big time ultimates down. Yeah, and that's probably even worse than not losing any heroes at this phase of the game. When you know that all their abilities are back, you Echo Slam! They did it again! Team Secret! Beautiful combination that ensures a pickup on two. And FNG's just sitting there going, I already blew my sleep. There's nothing I can do about this. Melee Rex goes down and GG is the call. Virtus Pro. They didn't seem to stand a chance. Team Secret, once they got that slight lead, they held onto it so tight and did not make any mistakes. Very well played, Team Secret. Walking away with the victory in game number one. And that's just perfect team play. They completely punished the lineup of VP who opted to go for a few risky maneuvers, but it didn't pay off.